Okay, excellent. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. As mentioned, I'm uh, Matt Holland, sales manager for uh, Americas at uh, XOcean. Um, XOcean is a uh, ocean data company, and we use uh, uncrewed surface vessels or USVs um, to provide a safe, reliable, and low carbon solution for the collection of ocean data. So in the talk today, uh, I'll give a bit of background about our uh, USV technology and then look at some projects um, where uh, we have uh, conducted carbon neutral marine mapping in various locations and including in the, uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, I do have some uh, videos in my uh, presentation, so I am just going to, uh, to turn off my camera uh, just for uh, bandwidth. So by way of agenda, um, I'll talk just a briefly bit of background about XOcean and then the USV technology, our carbon neutral approach to uh, marine mapping, and then some of the specific uh, case studies. So um, the ocean economy is expected to continue to grow uh, rapidly, and we believe that data will uh, underpin that growth. Uh, so traditionally, uh, large crude vessels have been used um, to perform uh, ocean data collection, but we do this differently using uh, USVs to collect data for companies, including other survey companies and uh, agencies with uh, interest in the marine environment. Um, the, um, we do this with um, providing a fixed price uh, turnkey service and with um, uh, no pay uh, or no data, no pay guarantees. And there's a number of benefits to using uh, USVs as a platform for collecting data. Um, for one, um, there's no personnel offshore. So we are reducing risk for everyone involved um, by uh, keeping people uh, working remotely uh, from either things like our control center or in some cases uh, working from home. It's a, also a very environmentally friendly approach. Uh, so the um, USVs emit a, a very low amount of carbon, and what little bit of carbon is emitted, we uh, offset that through other means, and we're, we're a carbon neutral survey company. And then by making use of these uh, smaller USVs, which can be uh, more quickly mobilized and uh, rapidly deployed and collect data through 24 seven operations, then we can also offer economic benefits as well. So XOcean was established in uh, 2017. And since that time, um, we have uh, worked in 14 different countries around the world, uh, including Canada and the US and within the Great Lakes, which I'll, I'll talk a bit more about later. Um, Altogether, we've delivered over 100 projects um, using the USVs for renewable energy companies, hydrographic offices, and others. And that's a successful um, operational hours of more than 35,000 uh, using our uh, fleet of USVs. So on the uh, technology side, uh, we are currently operating a fleet of uh, 12 USVs and we have uh, five more in production for 2021. Some of those are being built in Ireland and uh, others are also being manufactured in uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. And we just recently announced plans to uh, increase the overall fleet size to uh, 60 uh, in the coming years. So the, uh, the USVs, um, they're uh, very configurable in terms of the uh, the sensors that they can carry. So there's uh, sufficient power and uh, payload capacity to um, run uh, various commercial grade sensors concurrently. So the USV could be fitted out with a, a multi-beam, uh, sub-bottom profiler, magnetometer, or other sensors to be used for uh, ocean data collection. We do this or do the data collection through a full over the horizon satellite operations. And so what that means is that, um, you know, we can work very close to shore. That's uh, a very shallow draft USV, 
but by using satellite communications for the um, real-time control and monitoring of the USV operations, uh, we can also work hundreds of kilometers offshore and, and in, in independently as well uh, without the need for a support vessel. And the, the USV, which is about the size of a car, um, the model shown here, it's uh, four and a half meters long. Um, we can uh, launch it using slipways or boat ramps, um, much the same way you would with, uh, say, a speedboat, or we could use a crane to launch it off of a pier or a jetty, or using a, a launch and recovery system to uh, uh, have it launched off of a, a larger uh, research vessel or hydrographic vessel or what have you. And then once in the water, um, we can do the data collection through the 24-7 uh, operations to really maximize any available weather windows. So as you can see in the uh, image here, um, we have a catamaran style uh, USV. It's very capable in uh, adverse weather conditions. So, you know, even in uh, sea state five, we can still be out collecting uh, good quality data. You can see uh, up at the top on the gantry, uh, we have things like uh, visible light cameras, thermal cameras, uh, other sensors uh, to provide situational awareness information um, to the uh, USV pilots that are monitoring and controlling the USV. Uh, on the aft there, you can see the uh, satellite transceiver for the communications link. And on the top side of the deck, um, we have the uh, solar panels, which form part of the uh, hybrid power system for the USV. So that's complemented then by battery power, um, as well as um, a small uh, diesel generator. And, and that's where that small amount of carbon um, come from. But uh, again, very, very uh, environmentally friendly overall. We have here then uh, the sonar post. and. Even with uh, something like a, a multi-beam mounted or sub-bottom profiler mounted, it, it's still a very shallow draft, um, only about 0.6 of a meter, which allows us to work really very close to shore to, uh, to maximize coverage along the, uh, the coastline. So in, in addition then to the um, USV platform itself, uh, we also have developed the, uh, the cyber deck which is a cloud-based technology that allows our USV pilots and online surveyors to do the monitoring and control of the USVs. So through a secure VPN connection uh, and the satellite communications, then we, we have this uh, remote access. And also if we are working near to shore, uh, we can make use of uh, 4G cellular connection or uh, Wi-Fi to uh, maximize any available bandwidth for uh, access to the USV. And so this real-time monitoring, uh, as you can see in the images here, we have the, the situational feeds coming back to the uh, USV pilots. Um, and I think an important distinction is that the, the platforms are uncrewed, but they're not autonomous. So there's always a, a USV pilot monitoring and in control, uh, even when we're making use of you know, techniques or technologies like autopilot or things like AI to assist with uh, hazard identification. And it's that same way that our online surveyors are accessing the um, uh, survey computer payload uh, and the uh, survey controls or like the multi-beam controller and making adjustments to make sure that we're getting the uh, needed data coverage and quality when we're actually out there uh, collecting it so that we know that we have good data before we're leaving the uh, the work site. So the carbon neutral approach, um, this is really just kind of illustrating the, uh, the difference in the approaches. Um, you know, the traditional method, a really large offshore vessel uh, a lot of people and a lot of crew uh, on board. Uh, a vessel like that, uh, offshore support vessel, what have you, um, can emit large amounts of carbon per day. And, and when you think about the cost of that boat being out there, um, all the people being on board, the, uh, the fuel consumption uh, really at a high cost or high day rate. Whereas with the USV approach that we're taking, we're removing 
um, personnel from the offshore environment to improve safety. So our pilots and surveyors, are, as I mentioned, working from the control centers or, or working from home in some cases. And the USV is producing a very low amount of carbon, and again, which we offset through other means, and then doing this at a, a fixed price and, and at a, a lower cost than that, uh, that large vessel or platform. So again, traditionally using those larger vessels uh, to collect the, uh, the ocean data, um, but really uh, a much smaller platform like our USVs um, can have the same sensors uh, configured and mounted and still be meeting the same uh, data collection and data quality objectives. And so again, depending on the scope of the survey, uh, you could have a multi-beam configured collecting bathymetry and uh, sonar imagery. That could be backscatter and, and uh, digital side scan from the multi-beam, uh, sub-bottom mag, uh, current profiler information. Um, we have uh, the weather stations on the USVs, which are also always uh, continuously logging uh, data or, or other sensors again, so it's, it's very configurable. And then there's really the environmental uh, advantages. So when we're operating, we're only using about uh, two gallons of diesel a day or about you know 0.1 percent of what a, a larger offshore vessel would be using. It's also uh, an acoustically quiet platform and we travel at relatively low speed. So even, even during transits, we're only max speed at about four knots and uh, survey speed in the range of about three knots. And with that, you know, also we're posing uh, much less of a threat to uh, marine mammals that may be in the, the area than what, uh, you know, conventional vessel would. And again, having uh, the visible light cameras on the USVs for our pilots, um, that video footage is also recorded and could also be accessed in real time uh, to be used by uh, marine mammal observers or protected species observers um, as well. So then the, the kind of different case studies or I guess applications for where the USVs uh, can be used and the types of uh, inspection or data collection, um, you know, really it's, it's suited for a, a wide variety of applications and include, including mapping in uh, the Great Lakes or freshwater environments as well as ocean environments. And so we've, we've completed projects um, for uh, the renewables and offshore wind companies um, completed asset inspections for uh, other energy sectors, hydrographic surveys, and also scenarios of uh, doing uh, data downloads using acoustic sensors to get data off of uh, subsea sensors sitting on the bottom, maybe monitoring things like uh, seabed deformation. So the, the first uh, case study I'd like to talk about um, uh, Dr. Bouchard, Director General from uh, the CHS, made reference to this in her, in her keynote address. Um, in 2020, uh, IIC Technologies and XOcean had conducted an uncrewed hydrographic survey for the Canadian Hydrographic Service. And that project uh, was uh, funded through the uh, Government of Canada's Ocean Protection Plan which has aimed to um, you know keep uh, Canada's waters and coasts uh, clean and you know for today's use and, and future use and the mandatory survey area which you can see here um, that was in northern Lake Superior the uh, the mobilization and most of our transits were in and out of uh, Thunder Bay and the survey area is within a, a secondary low impact shipping corridor, so interests in terms of safety navigation, but it is also within the uh, Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area. And so using um, two USVs, uh, the XOcean team in uh, Ireland and the UK uh, remotely controlled uh, the USVs and did the online uh, data collection. And IIC, um, provided the on-site data processing and logistical support for the USVs. So uh, we'd be out surveying uh, remotely and once a week we would um, come back in uh, for data download and uh, refueling and servicing 
and uh, we'd be sent back out to survey and the IIC team on site would do the data processing and they were able to actually complete most of that um, while we were on uh, still you know on uh, project site but by by using the uncrewed technology uh, there was minimal people on site and the survey was conducted uh, successfully during uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So this, this was done in October and November of uh, last year. And so as summarizes there, uh, overall the mandatory area consisted of more than 800 kilometers square. Um, we mapped uh, up to about 200 meters water depth and had bathymetry that was meeting IHOS 44 and also had uh, concurrent backscatter. And so then the uncrewed hydrographic survey is actually continued uh, this year. So the, the optional area, um, the, uh, the CHS is funding the work to complete the optional area. As I mentioned, the mandatory area was done last year. And even today, um, currently we're out uh, collecting data in the uh, optional area with one of our US fees. So the um, primary objective uh, for this project is to really establish how USVs could be used to support marine-based science and in a uh, force multiplier, multidisciplinary capacity. So we're still focusing on the collection of the, the high quality bathymetry and backscatter data, um, but this time we're also going to be collecting other oceanographic uh, information for scientific applications. Um, so within next week we're planning to uh, mount a uh, acoustic fish tracker uh, on the USV. Um, as we've already been out surveying we've been collecting additional information like chlorophyll measurements and um, also through the operations uh, logging wind speed, uh, temperature and the video footage which is also going to be provided to support any uh, marine mammal observations. And so then some other case studies um, showing uh, things like the uh, um, offshore wind farms, which I think does have um, you know applications in, uh, in the Great Lakes. There's potential for offshore wind like the uh, Icebreaker Wind Project. And to date, a lot in, in Europe, um, but uh, other areas like Asia, um, we've worked on uh, 16 different offshore wind farms, and that's collecting ocean data to support uh, the full uh, development or full life cycle of these uh, renewable energy projects. And so that's right from doing data collection for the early uh, geophysical reconnaissance phase, all the way through to operation and maintenance and, and even uh, decommissioning. And so this is uh, showing some example of the uh, multi-beam data from uh, wind turbine uh, foundation inspections. So you can see here in the uh, image on the right, uh, the uh, point cloud data, we have a, a different color applied to the uh, multi-beam returns uh, for each survey line. So you can see great alignment there on, on the structure and can also see there in terms of uh, debris clearance around the turbine location and uh, you know identifying things like uh, the cable entries for the um, export cables or array cables uh, coming into the turbines. And then this is also showing uh, results from a, a cable survey, but it could also be some other sort of uh, asset on, on the bottom. Again, in the um, multi-beam data, can clearly see the, uh, uh, the cable itself and where we have uh, suspensions on the seabed. And then where the uh, cable went into burial, in this example, we had a sub-bottom profiler mounted and identifying for the uh, um, to determine the uh, the depth of cover on that cable to to make sure that's uh, protected in in certain areas. And then as a, a final example, um, again with uh, the USV being well suited for working very near to shore, um, we collect a lot of data for uh, coastal applications and landfall surveys for uh, pipes or cables. And we do this uh, using a combined approach of uh, the USVs and uh, uncrewed aerial vehicles. So when the uh, um, uh, high water, high tide, uh, low wind, we bring the USV to survey as close to shore as possible, um, can get right into the, uh, the zero meter waterline uh, when reduced to, to chart datum. 
And then at low water, uh, we fly the USV, which is configured with a uh, multi-spectral RGB camera to get the uh, topographic data and can also be used to get the uh, uh, extract the very shallow bathymetry. So the first couple meters water depth, uh, we can also get with the UAV sensors. And so then we can correlate and overlap that uh, with the uh, USV uh, multi-beam bathymetry. And so really then using um, uncrewed technology and um, this uh, carbon neutral approach, we can uh, effectively conduct uh, the marine mapping for you know, freshwater environments like in the Great Lakes, as well as ocean environments and collect data both uh, near and uh, far from shore. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. That's fascinating and very exciting. Um, Peter Esselman asks in the, in the question box, has the um, catamaran been configured to carry split beam echo sounders? And if so, are they gimbaled? Split beam echo sounders, as in, is that as in like a, a fisheries echo sounder? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Peter, do you want to expound on that? Sorry, I'm not, not that familiar with the term. Um, we, we have used fisheries echo sounders, um, like uh, uh, the SIMRAD EK um, on it for, to conduct uh, fish stock surveys. Okay, well, while we're waiting to see if he wants to, um, yes, fisheries echo sounder. So yeah, you're right on target. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, yes, we have done that. Um, we have, uh, uh, done work previously with the Marine Institute in Ireland and um, actually they had their uh, main research vessel um, the Celtic Explorer collecting data um, we were collecting data and we were actually able to find that we were um, getting uh, you know better I guess results um, and again that's where the USV being quite quiet compared to a conventional vessel really kind of came into play for doing that um, that type of survey and monitoring Okay, nice. Um, Tana Marshburn asks, is the vessel powered completely by solar and how long can it be deployed for? Um, it's not completely solar, it, it, it is hybrid. The, the solar deck uh, forms part of the power supply, uh, the other part being um, the, uh, the battery and then the, the solar uh, deck and the, uh, the small diesel generator kind of tops up uh, the battery. Um, we burn really a very small amount of fuel, and with those oh, those right. other like kind of s supplemental uh, approaches, really, um, we we could be out there for upwards of about 16 days. But in practical sense, um, you know, if we're doing uh, continuous data collection um, for so something like a multi-beam survey, we would normally every maybe eight days kind of do come in to, to do a, a data download and, and also take the opportunity to do some just uh, um, some small maintenance as well. So it's just sipping the diesel, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's right. Good <laughs> um, way to I, put it. Myself, I, I wondered, and I apologize if you said this, Matt. No, that's okay. What is the ratio of um, pilot to vessel? Like how many can can operate in tandem or is it one to one? Or how, how do you design operations where you know, you have um, more than one vessel maybe just uh, working in tandem. Yeah, I mean, it re really um, uh, depends on the project. Um, for some projects, um, we have one USV. Um, for uh, Lake Superior last year, we did have two deployed concurrently as kind of like a force multiplier, which one was one of the, the main evaluation objectives for, for the project. Um, we also have it... Um, working with other survey vessels. So again, a, in a force multiplier capacity, um, we've conducted um, projects for uh, uh, carbon capture projects where we've had uh, three of them deployed concurrently. Um, we've also had examples where it's been working off a construction vessel and, and being just fo the only platform really focused on the, um, the, the mapping applications so it it's really um it's really very very open um and so the 
remote communications and our teams of pilots and online surveyors, um, although they're all remote, they're very um, connected and, and communicating in real time to have those those efforts coordinated or or if we're working with another survey company or agency or, or what have you. Okay, thanks, Matt. I've got one more question. Um, is there any concern with survey vessel icing? Since we're talking to the Great Lakes crowd here, that's obviously a concern. Yeah, yeah. and actually, um, that was one aspect that I, I didn't touch on much uh, in this presentation. Um, I had a bit more detail in uh, U.S. Hydro last week, but uh, yeah, one one of the lessons learned was um, the icing in Lake Superior. So, um, one of the main objectives for CHS last year was to um, sort of evaluate the suitability of the USVs, but also for remote environments, northern environments like the Arctic. And so when we were surveying in October and November, we did have ice forming on the USV. Now, fortunately, because of the solar deck and the fact that the USV is very, uh, sits very low in the water, it wasn't really a, an issue. Um, the solar deck helped to melt some of the ice through the day, but where we did get ice forming was more up on the um, the gantry, up on that uh, that upper part um, above the the yellow uh, structure, and um, that did um, result in a, in a blockage of the air intake, which uh, then the IIC team on site um, made a modification in the field, and we've since modified our design for the USVs to kind of account for that lesson learned, which is you know part of the part of the reason for doing the, the project. 